Welcome to this ABI Research Snapshots. I'm Tankra Taylor, Principal Analyst at ABI Research, and I'm joined today by Alex Gwillen, who leads the Life Science Division at Tive. We'll be discussing how the pharma industry is rethinking visibility to build more resilient, efficient, and intelligent supply chains. Alex, in our recent survey of manufacturers and distributors in the pharmaceutical industry, one of the key supply chain challenges which respondents noted was regulatory compliance. How does that match up with what you see at Tive? Hello, Tengret, and thank you for giving me this time as well. So uh, what we have seen is the compliance for the last years have been very much focused on pretty much the integrity of the drug, and with this is about temperature excursions, making sure that the integrity is there, the efficacy of the drug is there. But we are seeing right now that compliance is going way beyond that. So it's not just about temperature, it's about actually securing that information that we have, the data that we have from beginning of the shipment all the way to the end of the shipment. So it's the end-to-end -end visibility, which allows us to actually capture information that allows us to see the integrity, but not just based on temperature excursion, but also in anything that could happen during the transportation that could damage or put at risk efficacy of the drug. Tive in it, let's say one of the young companies who started to look into tracking and having given that real-time visibility. Company started with uh, many other industries, not necessarily life science and pharma, but now we have been expanded in the last three to four years in life science. So we have been able to give that what the companies were requiring. So expanding their compliance into more than excursion and actually making sure that drug is totally reliable upon arrival. So that, that's our area, that's what we're trying to support, and, and so far it's been quite, working quite well. So I think it's a really important point that compliance and visibility go hand in hand. As we see in that survey chart there, regulatory compliance is the topmost challenge, but uh, some of the other challenges that respondents faced were relying heavily on manual processes, so lack of automation, and also lack of end-to-end -end visibility into their product, and then also risk management and disruption preparedness, so effectively being able to act on data that is uh, coming in. When we look at sort of where the challenges are across the pharmaceutical supply chain, where are the, the visibility gaps that you still see pharmaceutical manufacturers um, and distributors struggling with? Yeah, so what is happening right now, especially in the last four or five years, is there is a lot of supply chain disruptions. Right. The industry was focusing final products, so they were looking at, okay, I mean, we manufacture somewhere in Europe, but we're shipping somewhere in the world, and they were looking at that part of the supply chain, right, that, that area only. But we have found, and actually companies are seeing, is that if you look at the end-to-end -end on the whole production of the supply chain, it means inbound products coming, for example, APIs and reagents coming from China or India, well, that part was pretty much not very, very secure. So we have been able to, well, what we have seen is that we are actually able to have a better processes to control the integrity of also those APIs, those ingredients that are going into production. So that part was weak. So now we are covering that part. Um, the other area that was quite weak was the end to the last mile of, the, of, of distribution. So drugs going into some depot in some country and from there to the hospital or to the last mile. Thanks God, technologies now allows us to give more visibility in those areas because they require smaller devices, they require smarter devices, sometimes and they are actually spoke to the patient, so therefore they cannot be too complex. So that's where those two areas, let's say the inbound of manufacturing as well as the last miles, were pretty much a big challenge. And thanks to, let's say, the development of technology, we're able to address it. And actually, we have pretty good examples of that in the last uh, six months. Thanks. No, I think that's a really interesting answer. I think there are several things there that I'd like to pick up on. One of them is the end-to-end -end nature of uh, traceability, uh, and in particular linking pharmaceutical suppliers or manufacturers and distributors uh, with every other part of their supply chain. So that's their tier suppliers all the way down to the end customer. Uh, to that end, we're seeing a bigger growth in risk management platforms that are helping to link that data, and then control towers that are helping to optimize uh, distribution processes and manufacturing processes across the entire supply chain, not just uh, a siloed view of what is happening inside the supply chain. The second point is that we're sort of moving more to this level of item level visibility. So more granular information on more products. And that will be particularly important as we get visibility into the products that are going to uh, the consumer home as well. With this growth, the growth in item level data and this adoption of risk management technologies uh, comes a bigger opportunity for uh, realizing greater value in the supply chain, but there also comes a greater data management challenge. What do you see uh, in terms of what pharmaceutical companies want to achieve when they're adopting visibility technologies? What does it mean to them? Traditionally, the industry has been focused on actually being very reactive in terms of technology. So temperature monitors were used when, in the case it was an excursion, they were trying to find out where the excursion happened, there was a root cause management of, that, of the issue. 
So there was, it was always very reactive. So if there was a problem, there was an issue, the integrity of the drug, the only thing they could do is just go back and try to find out where it happened and why it happened on that. And that would take weeks. A lot of people involvement and all that. The first evolution was that now basically, for example, with a solution of real-time visibility, if that happens, we can take action and the, and the solution, or, or let's say the finding out where the problem is, is a question of minutes compared to of, of weeks, because we can immediately know what happened, where and when, and the issues were. But not only that, when we start gathering data, more and more data of where happened, what happens during the whole shipping transportation, the full supply chain, the companies can take, uh, are taking more proactive actions instead of just being reactive, which means by, by understanding what is happening weekly, daily in their shipments, they can actually start realizing, well, this, per, I give you an example, you know, this road is at risk, this supplier is not performing, this site is, doesn't half the actual capability I'm supposed to be having, for example, minus 20 instead of 2 to 8. And so that information, that data allows them to not only be reactive to issues, but they start planning and optimizing the processes and seeing this is now the best way to do a shipment. I'm going to use this uh, courier instead of that one because they are performing better in this area. Now I know that this site is having issues. Now I know that this road is at risk. So what happens is by having that data and putting it together, to start minimizing the risk, minimizing the risk, and minimizing the risk. And this is this is what we want to be. We don't want to, you know, lose drugs, waste them, and then try to then replace them just and be happy with the fact that we know what, what happened, but actually we can actually avoid that problem in the future. That's reducing waste. Now, if you add to that, the fact that that data, that information now can be integrated with all the partners, right? The 3PLs, the carriers, the depots, the airports, and we can have integrate, we have, we can integrate that information that makes those resolutions much smarter. So integration of data, cooperation between the players, the major service providers into that, uh, let's say, into understanding the, what not, only, not only what's going on, but the risk of what could happen makes a big, big difference. And, uh, and I think it's going to have a huge impact um, on the way that manufacturers are actually, pharmaceutical manufacturers are actually looking at this, at, uh, at the potential of technology, because now they can actually avoid the problem instead of just reacting to its, you know, to its damage. I think that move towards um, acting on data is really important in the supply chain. We're seeing, we've obviously seen the uh, conversation evolve around AI over the past uh, several years, and in particular this year around agentic AI and being able to make decisions. We've also seen several software companies rebrand themselves more around decision intelligence rather than just around IoT tracking. And in a sense, we've had this for a while, right? On the fleet side, on the fleet management side, uh, companies have been able to sort of optimize their routes and sort of plan around fuel, etc. But what Tive is doing seems to be more bring that to a more granular level with battery power trackers that are independent uh, of supply chain partners. And I think that's a really important point because one of the things that was mentioned by uh, the survey respondents was that they don't trust the source of the data um, that, is, that, that is coming to them. Is that something that you see frequently and how do you see uh, customers reacting to that? Yeah, no, it's, it's totally, we, we see that because um, a courier, a third party operator, freight forwarder for a pharma company, they are not working alone. They are also using partners. They are using third party operators, right? Because they, they, they let's say, have a European company, but then they need to have cooperations with companies, I don't know, somewhere else in other continents. So they might have a level of information, but they might not have the full level of information based on the agreements or technology of their third party operators, right? So now what happens is the, the, the farm, just one side. So we are assisting 3PLs, we're assisting freight forwarders to enlarge that visibility themselves and being able to provide that visibility to the pharmaceutical manufacturer. Now, in addition to that, a pharmaceutical manufacturer might not just use one 3PL. We might use three, four, five, depending on the areas that they are, you know, they're, they're shipping products to. And in that case, they will be limited by the information they will get from each other. Some of them will give them information. Some of them, they won't give them the level of visibility they want. Now, in that case, you know, you pharma company, that's what we're getting. They're asking us more and more to say, okay, we're fine. We work with our third, three, with our 3PLs. We have our couriers. We have those relationships. We have the perfect cooperation. But I also would like to have the total visibility myself, right? I, I want to see what's going on with all my the, my service providers, uh, my transport in anywhere in the world. And in that case, I can also start planning long term. And, and this is what we are doing more and more with the agreement with the service providers because they do understand that this is a need that's coming 
uh, from their customers, right? But we need to keep that cooperation because the important reason is not just about visibility. The important thing is about also being able to take action. So the, the transport company is also take, can help also to take action. So we can also, we can trigger the alert, something always gone, a deviation of the truck is happening, it shouldn't happen, but then somebody has to take action and it could be us, it could be the, the 3PL, or it could be the customer themselves because it could be, the problem could be at some depot that they have ownership, right? So it is, it's about cooperation, it's about integrating the data, and it is about really making sure that that visibility is across the whole supply chain. And that ha can happen only if, you know, we centralize that information in cooperation with the, with the service providers. But it's happening, it's, it's a reality we're seeing more and more and uh, and that cooperation is really making a big, big difference. I think those are, those are good points and I want to bring that back to the survey uh, results that we're seeing as well in terms of whether priorities were over are for enhancing supply chain visibility over the next 18 months. A lot of it was around increasing how much uh, IoT is being used to track the number of lanes, to track the types of products. But there's also a significant chance with integrating visibility systems with each other and with um, ERP systems, as well as uh, again, modernizing the broader IT infrastructure around that so that these different visibility technologies can be used and so that all these different sources of data from various partners can be uh, brought into a single pane of glass. What do you expect over the next five years? Yeah, I think that one, one, of the, one of the big developments that we have right now is that the data is coming not just from one source, but many sources in the supply chain, right? Now it's available. It's available. We used, it didn't used to be available. Companies, service providers are now, you know, come accumulating the data, putting it together, and actually that allows to have a better decision making. The usage, I mean, the pharmaceutical industry itself is very conservative, right? So it's one of the component industries that actually adopts technology slower than almost any other industry. So I think that what is going to change, what is changing right now is that they are pharmaceutical companies are seeing that this data is available, that it's going to stay, that it's going to be more and more, let's say, of more and more value. And therefore, if we actually, if they are actually able to put that data together and, you know, manage look into that, they will be able to be more proactive in decision-making the supply chain, right, and being reactive. And with that said, that's also a big player for process optimization, for risk reduction that they are able to, to implement. It used, to, it used to be a case that was very, very reactive, whether there was an excursion or not. Now, actually, they can actually they can, they can improve their processes. Yeah, I think that's going to be a big game changer, you know, to be able to manage and understand that data. If I can say that one thing is also that pharma companies are now integrating more and more data science uh, data analysts internally evaluating the use of this information, how they can use it better. We are seeing that. Alex, thank you so much for joining me today and thank you all for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me come in. For more on this topic, check the link below to download the white paper.